first, is the tide against far-left lunacy turning? Well, not as much as we'd like. Sadly, the woke mind virus has taken a firm hold on the culture from academia to Hollywood to the corporate world. But there are promising signs, and I'm going to bring you two recent examples of corporations walking away from that ideological capture. And in both cases, it was a backlash from the public that led to that retreat. This week, we learned that Disney has delayed the release of its much-mocked Snow White reimagining, you know, the new PC version of the classic fairy tale starring this insufferable girl <laughs> with uh, the seven dwarves replaced with an ethnically and gender-diverse group of magical creatures to avoid reinforcing stereotypes. That was the explanation from Disney. But after much, much mockery, this week Disney not only announced the release date of Snow White would be delayed by at least a year, but it also <laughs> appears to be reinstating the dwarves. Oh, no, what about those harmful stereotypes? I do hope the dwarves are at least racially diverse and non-binary. Now, the studio claims that the writer's strike is behind the delay, but those in the know say that's not the case. The production is being dramatically changed to avoid being another box office disaster. You see, audiences don't want lame, woke movies pushing leftist ideology. That's obvious. And a point the creators of South Park drive home in their latest work. Why are they replacing every single character with someone who is diverse? But then Kennedy's like, it's not our fault, it's because of Kathleen Kennedy. But then Kathleen Kennedy's just like, it, make it my lane. And everyone in town is like, no, please, Kathleen Kennedy, stop ruining everything. But Kathleen Kennedy is all like, put another gay diverse woman in it, make it my lane. And the Disney stock just keeps going down and down and down. And then Bob Iger is all like, no, no, what's going on with my stock? No, Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, the president of the Disney-owned Lucasfilm, but I'm sure the problems at Disney extend far beyond her. Let's see if this Snow White rethink is going to be a trend in their other productions. Another recent example of a corporate going from woke to broke to ultra-conservative is Bud Light. Now, we all know of the lunacy that saw the brand being promoted by trans activist Dylan Mulvaney and how that cost the company billions, not millions, billions. Well, they tried to rebuild their image. There were all sorts of statements released and a number of pro-America, pro-blokey ads, even one starring Taylor Swift's latest dude, Travis Kelsey, but all those ads bombed because, one, they were lame and <laughs> certainly not enough to convince their once loyal customer base to forgive them. So this week, Bud Light went full-blown MAGA. Yes, they teamed up with the most politically incorrect partner possible, the UFC. This is a company led by Dana White. There's nothing PC about the UFC, its fighters or its fans or its owners. Uh, coincidentally, this is a hilarious video that Trump posted just four days ago featuring him at UFC fights, uh, President Joe Biden also makes an appearance. Yes, Bud Light has gone from a trans activist to the UFC. It shows the power that conservative consumers have and what can happen when they actually exercise that power. Something for our corporates who lined up to back the racist voice to keep in mind. Now, before I go, I want to bring you some footage of protesters who I'm reliably informed are the usual socialist suspects at 
every leftist protest in Melbourne from BLM to global warming, who are now turning up to pro-Palestinian rallies to intimidate members of the independent media, including TikTokers, from filming what is really happening. That's TikToker. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at one of these. What are you trying to do? Are you trying to block me off? It's getting blocked off. Yep, that's TikToker Mr. Sakant, who has more than 150,000 followers on that platform. And he was trying to film a protest in Melbourne when miscreants <clears> decided <throat> that they were going to physically stop him. Excuse me. I'm just trying to walk through. I'm just, just trying to get through here. I've got a barricade against me, my friend. I'm actually just trying to get through. Look at this. Now, those people are physically impeding his progress, his right to walk a public street and film a protest, but far more disturbing the illib than the illiberal uh, thuggish behaviour of the leftist protesters is the response from Victoria police officers who, instead of protecting that man's rights, instead join in the intimidation and accuse him of upsetting those who are tormenting him. What are you doing? Okay. All right, yeah, yeah, we're just filming. Well, no, they're, 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 they're not letting me stand where I'm supposed to stand. I'm not upsetting anyone. Cross the line, maybe move on. 100%. What's, I want to know what they're doing. We told you, you understand, so you upset people. You know what's going on, okay? I really don't. I honestly do not. We'll leave it to it, but I warned you. There you go. In Victoria. <laughs> It's mob rule. Don't go upsetting thugs or the cops will have you. This is what happens when the police force becomes hopelessly politicised.